and welcome to the Sunday Fun Day Show. <laughs> yes. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Shannon. <laughs> um, you have anything to tell us about your day yesterday? Mm, I don't think so. Not really. I mean, I had some trouble with laundry. Um, I just, I don't know. I just kept forgetting to put it in the dryer. So I had to do it three times. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Well, I'm talking a little bit, you know, something else. Like something our friends may enjoy to hear. Uh, no, I don't think so. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing else. Nothing like our soccer game. You were there, right? You remember? <laughs> that was so loud, Shannon. Goodness. I thought that's what they did at the soccer game. Everybody, okay. <sighs> Shannon and I joined a soccer league. Yeah, we did. And for some reason, we ended up on the same team. There. Mm hmm We did. And... Just tell him. Just tell him what happened. Tell him what I did. I, I just, I don't think I really remember. Or I don't you can't remember? I, don't I scored the winning goal. I just kicked it. Oh. I just kicked the ball and it went in that square net thing. You know. You know. With that guy in the front. You mean the goal? Around? Yeah, that's it. Yes. Listen. Winning goal. It, Shannon, I, I really don't know how that happened. The ball just happened to bounce over to your foot and then off of your foot and into the goal. It was pure luck. That was not luck. That was skill. American talent, soccer, or whatever that goal net thing is. Oh my I did that. Gosh. I did. First game ever. Jana, ever. Are you kidding me? No. Listen, I didn't want to tell you this because I didn't want to bring you down. Mm. Listen, the goalkeeper sneezed. Right when the ball bounced <laughs> off of your foot and it no. went into the goal. He, he just, he had to cover his nose. He could not block it. I'm I don't, sorry. I do not remember it that way. He did definitely, he did, did not, did not sneeze. No. Mm -mm. Yes, he did. I mean, I saw him with my own eyes. No. There's no way you could score a goal on purpose in your first game. <laughs> but I did. It was amazing. I mean, what else do you expect? Um, I, what, you, Shannon, I'm sorry. You're just learning how to play this game. Look, look, it's, look, kiddo, kiddo. What? I made the goal. You call me a kiddo? Yeah, simmer down, chief. You, it's all right. Chief? I got what? skills. Oh my goodness, oh my God. You need to work on that. Yeah, you do. You know what? What? We're going to have a penalty kick challenge right now. Get up. Let's go. Wait, what? A what? Challenge. Get up. You don't even know what a penalty right, kick is. But I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Bubble story time with Jonathan. Ooh, well, I hope you guys are okay and figure out the whole soccer goal thing. And while you sort all that out, I'm going to tell a story today. Well, what's up Upstreet? My name is Jonathan and I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. We are going to look at a story that Jesus told today. You can actually read it in the book of Matthew chapter 20. Now, a story that Jesus tells is called a parable. Parables are stories that have meaning. They tell us something about the way that the world should be. And so at the beginning of this parable, Jesus tells us the kingdom of God is like. And he goes on to tell us the story. Now, whenever Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, what he's talking about is 
wherever people are that believe in him. And so Jesus is talking about what it means for us to believe in him. And he says the kingdom of God is like a man who owns a vineyard. Now, if you're not sure what a vineyard is, a vineyard is just a really large field of grapes and grapevines. And so Jesus tells us this story. Now, the kingdom of God is like a vineyard. And a man who owns this vineyard, he went out into town early, early in the morning, and he wanted to hire people to come work in his vineyard. So he hires a couple people early in the morning, and he says, hey man, go get to work. And so they go work in the vineyard. And so a couple hours later, the vineyard owner goes back out into town, and he hires a couple more people, and he sends those people back to his vineyard to work. And then at lunchtime, the man who owns the vineyard goes to town the third time, and he says, hey, I need you guys to come work in my field. And then he sends them back to work in the field. And then the vineyard owner goes out one more time right at the very end of the day. And he goes back into town and he says, hey, I need you to come work in my vineyard. And so he sends these guys back to the vineyard. So what we, what has happened is that this owner of the vineyard has gone out into town multiple times during the day and has hired people to work. Now, the guys that he worked asked to work early in the morning, they obviously worked the long longer than the guys that he asked to work in the evening. And so the end of the day comes around and the vineyard owner calls all of the workers to him and says, all right, now I'm going to pay you. And he starts to pay the guys that he hired last. And so he hires them and he pays them a day's wage. And then he goes to the next group and he hires, pays them a day's wage. And then he goes to the group that he hired at lunchtime and he pays them a day's wage. And then he goes to the group that he hired first thing in the morning and he pays them the same that he'd been paying everybody else. Now you can imagine those people were probably like, what's going on? I've worked so much longer than everybody else. Why are you paying me the same that you paid the guys who only worked an hour? And I would imagine you probably even have the same feeling. Wow, that is not fair. How could Jesus be telling us this story? And the story tells us that the guys that got hired early in the morning, they were grumbling and they were complaining and then they were stomping their feet going, eh, it's not fair, you know? And so Jesus wraps up the story and the vineyard owner looks at these people and he says, well, who are you to tell me what I can do with my own money? I was generous to them and I was generous to you. And so Jesus wraps up this story and he tells us that sometimes we have to be thankful for the things that we have. We have to be grateful for the things that we have because Jesus wants us to pay attention to how he has been generous to us. And when we pay attention to how Jesus has been generous to us, we don't have to pay attention to what other people get or don't get. Jesus tells us that if we can be thankful for all that he's given us, we'll learn to be grateful and we'll be able to look around and be thankful for the things that we have and not have to worry about what other people have. Well, that's my story, guys, and I'll see you guys next week. Yeah, thanks for the story. Anytime, guys. I'll see you later. Man, Kelly, I think... We just really need an attitude adjustment. I know. You're right. You're right. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe my goal was lucky, but um, I definitely shouldn't have bragged so much about it. You know what? I should have been more grateful. That goal won the game for us. Oh, I love that you said that, Kelly. I'm just grateful for you. <laughs> and I am grateful for... Soccer! Oh yeah, baby! <laughs> oh, oh, and you too. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Anyways, let's reveal the question. Ooh, good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got it right here. What is keeping you from being grateful? Yeah, what kind of things are getting in the way of your gratitude for other people? Oh, let me see. Okay. You know what? You guys think about it. Talk about it at home. Uh, chew on it a little bit. Okay. Maybe not literally chew on it, but um, uh, oh. chat. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye.